Thank you all for coming. I know it is bright and early on day two of Black Hat, which is uh, generally always a challenge. So by the attendance in the audience, I'm guessing that this is probably a hot topic. Um, before I get started, uh, the last three, four, five days um, that this talk has has kind of made around the social security ecosystem has been a really interesting experience for me. Um, I found that the security posture of software releases is a very sensitive topic that you know, nobody wants to talk about, but unfortunately it's reality. Um, you know, I, I'm going to try not to break any news to you, but software's flawed. Uh, every release of software is flawed, and anybody that tells you that they're releasing software that is perfect is absolutely not telling the truth. So let's get started, and a little bit about this talk today. And I'm not working here. We'll try this manually. All right, a little bit about the team that helped put this talk together, because this is a lot of information, and anybody who's put a Black Hat talk together knows the amount of work that goes into it. Um, again, I'm Christine Gadsby. I have the pleasure of being the director for the Product Security Operations Group at BlackBerry. Um, I am basically a big group of defenders, so anything that hits the market uh, as far as a BlackBerry product or service goes, we have a team of people that is a centralized organization. Their only job in BlackBerry is just to look at products in market. Um, that offers and affords us some really unique uh, opportunities. And, and one is to obviously look at the health of software releases. Uh, Diane Gooden, our senior operations program manager, uh, who actually is in charge of managing this program right now, did a lot of work here. Um, we have our social media, Simron, uh, our social media specialist. And then Tyler Towns, who's the manager of the CERT uh, did a lot in this talk too. Um, for those of you that were at Black Hat 2016, you may have seen a talk that Jake Coons and I did um, on open source software security. And this talk is gonna springboard a little bit of, off of that. Um, BlackBerry released what we call our open source software maturity model, which is really an introduction on how you as a company can start looking at the use of open source software you know, how do you create some process to understand it in your organization? And this isn't just from a licensing and compliance perspective. This is more on, on how do you look at the footprint that you create and the attack surface that you create by uh, introducing open source software into your product verticals. Um, that is actually available in our GitHub as well, uh, which is product security, easy to remember. So you can pick up a copy of that um, at your leisure after this talk. I want to start a little bit with a story, and I want to thank Kimberly Price, who actually had a conversation with me about this analogy, and it, it's actually fantastic. This is Lucy. This is my dog. She's a woodle. She's a service dog. Uh, I have a daughter who um, is autistic, and this is her service dog that lives in her house every day. But the interesting thing about Lucy is she wasn't free. She was actually pretty expensive. But her day-to-day -day care is insane. It's something that I, were, I wasn't ready for when we got her, um, but much like open source, you know, she requires maintenance. Uh, you know, <laughs> and what happens when you don't take care of the maintenance is this. So, you know, you have to remember with a dog and any anything, you know, you got to feed her, you got to take care of her, you got to make sure she doesn't get in the garbage while you're on a conference call, because this is literally what happened to me last week. I came out after a conference call. In fact, I think I was on a conference call with you guys and walked out to my oodle in the garbage. So this is just a really great picture of, of the fact that, you know, using open source in your products is, is the same thing. Really it is, it's a great analogy. When you put an open source library or a free library or any kind of project into your products, it takes maintenance. You can't, you know, stick it in there and ship a product and then think you're done. Actually, it's not. It's much like taking care of a dog. You've got to track it. You have to understand, you know, does it need patching? You have to understand, is, the, is it even supported in the industry? Those are some pretty heavy thoughts uh, to take on. And at BlackBerry, what's interesting around releasing software is we sort of look at this very black and white. Um, because we have the centralized source and we have the availability to, I look at software releases as the left or the right side of the screen. If you're watching your software releases and you know the kind of software that's shipping and you're looking at it like, you know, A, I have a choice, I can, use this software release to either A, reduce the attack surface and the attack footprint that I'm shipping, or B, increase it. And or, you know, if the key here in understanding this program is if you're not asking yourself that question at the time you're shipping software, you need to start asking that question because that's exactly what you're doing, whether or not you're actually looking at it or not, 
that's what you're doing. So here on the left side of the screen, I sort of figure you, you're answering those questions, you're understanding it, you're looking at that liability, you know, or the opposite on the right is you're creating liability, and if you're not looking at it, you actually don't know you're creating liability, which is from the last week of conversations that I've had with people, um, if you're sitting here thinking you're in that boat, trust me, the majority of people are actually in that boat. So why does BlackBerry care? This is a question that I get asked all the time. BlackBerry's in a really, really unique space, right? We have all these high assurance customers. We've pivoted to be a software security vendor. Um, you know, we have companies within BlackBerry like QNX who is deeply buried in the supply chain. So from end to end, we have all of these opportunities where if we aren't tracking our software releases and we aren't looking at them as a vehicle to either reduce or increase attack surface, and if you're playing a drinking game, I'm probably gonna say attack surface a lot, um, but if you're not, you know, then we have to be, we have to be. And you know, why is that important? Well, we've got hundreds of products we manage in market. You know, we have hundreds of sources of threat intelligence that we actually monitor daily. Um, we have thousands of vulnerabilities we investigate, um, and then, you know, many strained relationships. Uh, if you think that you will create some kind of a program in your company where you are looking at attack surface of software releases for product teams, and that will not strain relationships, think again. Because product teams love to ship software, of course they do. Their job is to create revenue. And if you're gonna come in and point out their baby's ugly, better have a plan for that, because that's a problem. Let's look a little bit though of a picture of what a general SDLC looks like bringing a product to market, right? I look at it kind of as two different ways of getting a actual secure product to market. There's the general, you know, top of the slide here that I think what dev teams think, and this is how my product teams work. You know, they're looking at the requirements phase and the design phase, and they're looking at, you know, doing the development and the testing, and, the testing, and then, you know, obviously they're shipping, you know, deploying to market. What's really cool when product security and software security gets involved at BlackBerry, um, and I have a counterpart in my organization, Jonathan, I know he's here, his whole role in the company is to look at pre-market software. So BlackBerry is, again, really fortunate in that we take this extremely seriously, it's you know, our heritage and, and how we've gotten to where we are, but Jonathan follows this bottom you know, footprint himself. So while the dev teams are doing the top, he's doing the bottom. He's doing threat modeling and design review. He's got secure architecture and hardening requirements, um, you know, static analysis, and in fact, for threat modeling, um, if you didn't catch Adam Showstack's talk yesterday, when the videos come out, make sure and, and catch that talk. Adam, Adam is just definitely a, a great resource when it comes to threat modeling. Um, but this is really how everything works in life to bring, you know, a product to market that's secure. But the problem that we have is what happens the day that's available to the public. You go to all this effort to bring up this product and all of these design and requirements changes and the product goes to market and then what I see in the industry a lot of times is companies, you know, like, oh, I did it, you know, and they're, they're done. That's not it at all. Again, going back to Lucy, my puppy, you know, she needs maintenance and so does your software. You have to think about it like open hunting season the second that first customer available build is out there, it's out there for everybody, including your attackers. So you've gotta watch it because, you know, if you think nobody's watching it, that's just not the case. So what should you be doing? I think we understand the problem, and I think, again, nobody wants to talk about it, but everybody's talking about it. So this is why we put this talk together. Um, we we want to help this problem and we want to go off some of our years. We have a program called the Software Readiness Review. It's about an eight-year-old program at BlackBerry. Oh man, has it gone through a lot of, <laughs> a lot of iterations over the years. But what we're going to do is we're going to make available in our GitHub some of our templates I'm going to cover um, so that you can kind of start to at least have conversations to look at what it would like, you know, to build this program on your own. So, but why do it? What should we be doing? So. Mitigating risk on behalf of your customers is really important. Having a software review program is absolutely the first step in taking in depth to start reducing that attack surface for your customers. If you are shipping a product, it doesn't matter what it is, you are increasing attack surface for the people that are using that product. We have multiple product versions in market at the same time. It doesn't matter how many products you have, it is 
I mean, I'm not gonna tell you any news you don't know. You could have three, four, 18, whatever, products in market at the same time. If you fix something, how do you know where your fixes are? Do you know that they're in six of 18 products that are actually in market, or do you know if they're in all 18? That's a question that you should be prepared to answer. That actually leads into, obviously, a bigger goal for this program, which is just knowing your security posture um, overall. This is kind of a double-edged sword because customers don't like upgrading. We struggle, or at least did for a couple of years, talking through customer demands for patching. BlackBerry is very vocal about all the software patching it does. It's, it's a huge priority. We, we spend a lot of money on it. But if you're an enterprise software vendor, it costs you money to take those patches. So on one side, customers are often saying, hey, patch this, you know, I'd like, a, I'd like a patch every two days. Well, that's great. But then if we give them updated builds every two days, they have to pay to implement it. So then they're complaining about, <laughs> about how much it costs. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Do you want software patches or do you want cheap software? Make up your mind, right? It is a tough one and it's a balance. Having a software readiness review program allows you to take a lot of customer feedback, to take a lot of product team knowledge, and put that into a big program where you can start running data to understand your cost effectiveness, which again, revenue is king, so we have to understand that. The last note here for this slide is the biggest one. That's why it's in blue. You have to actually ensure you have a way to get your security fixes to your customers. It absolutely blows my mind at how many people I talk to in the industry, and I know I'm not alone in thinking this, where you know big business is like, oh, well, we fixed that two months ago, and I'm asking the question to anybody, okay, well, when did you ship the fixes? Because this person just found the vulnerability as a, as a customer, so where's the disconnect? Product team's goal is to develop fixes. It isn't necessarily their goal to track those fixes to market in different versions. So if pro some product teams do, and some product teams don't. But if there's no security function within your company tracking that as a standard, then you're gonna be all over the place. And you're really never gonna know your security posture in market because you're not gonna know if your product version 6.7 has you know, 18 out of 28 critical patches or not. How, I mean, and if you're gonna let the product team tell you what they've done, are they keeping track? If you think they're keeping track, that's okay, but I would double check. Uh, and I love this quote, and Tyler on our team came up with this, a fix in the build is better than two in the repository, and that is, that is certainly true. All right, so now what? So you know you have to do it, how do you get started? Great question. So number one, first things first, you wanna go have a software review program uh, at your company, get support. I think most companies in here are probably doing a quarter of this already or half of it or three quarters of it. You're tracking your software for things like functionality, right? You're taking a product, you're putting in a calendar functionality and if it fails the build, you're tracking stuff like that, right? So why not have a security review? Why not add one more criteria? So start at the top and work your way down. You definitely need to go to the highest product level, whether it's a senior leadership or it's your CEO or whoever's going to be accountable for that. Make sure you're getting that buy-in from the top down. Um, I have lots of great ideas as far as uh, support you can get to do that for your senior leadership team. Realize that at some point, some of this is going to be regulated. At some point, not today, but realize that while your senior leadership team may not be paying attention, people in security are, and there are lots of projects going on right now externally looking at do we regulate bill of material transparency? Do we regulate understanding open source software in products? That should scare the living daylights out of everybody because if you're not ready for something like that to happen and you don't have a program like this built, your customers are going to drown you and that is one of the key pieces of data to take back to your leadership team. Um, we'll throw some stuff in our GitHub uh, in order to help with that but just, just know that there's lots of data out there to support it. So. Uh, anyway, get support. Most important thing, product leaders need to be on board, senior leaders need to be on board. Step two, define what a vulnerability is. Goodness gracious, this is one of the hottest things, I swear, in every 
company I go to talk to or people I talk to within our organization, you would be amazed at how many different definitions there are of what a vulnerability is. On the right hand side here is, is just a simple picture and this will be available in our GitHub too, you can take this, this is really easy. But what I see is something really easy, it never fails, I you know, talk to somebody else and in, the, in the product scope and they're scratching their heads and so it takes some explanation. But basically, when you're looking at software releases, you need to look at a product as in, if it ships two gold candidates a year that go global, you have two opportunities to go sweep up all that security debt. Are you gonna take it or are you gonna leave it? That's one product. So obviously customer count on that's high, liability on that's high. If you're not gonna look at that as an opportunity to uh, you know, increase or reduce attack surface, then you're gonna let it go out the door and you're not gonna be able to do it again. So take that into account, right? Divine the risk based on your customers, partners, stakeholders, and again, that goes back to the product release. Another thing that absolutely must happen in this, once you have support and everybody agrees that you wanna start looking at this, is defining what critical means. This program we have is about eight years old, and uh, I can remember six years ago or so, we couldn't agree what critical was, and because we didn't do step one, we didn't really have support for the program, we just kept changing it to be more important. And I know there's people in this room that know exactly what I'm talking about. We did showstopper because it was critical and we just couldn't get the critical push through, so we changed it. So stop, showstopper, super bad, really bad bug. I don't even remember what all the names were, but because we weren't getting executive support, we just kept trying to charge when you know we would see things that weren't patched in order to get people to pay attention. So again, not good, but decide what a critical means. Decide what a critical means between your product teams. Decide what it means when your security groups. Decide what it means and everybody that's gonna have to look at that, that way there's no arguing, right? All right. Ensure security development are able to agree on prioritization of that. So what are you gonna prioritize when you do your software review and you find stuff that's not patched? Because you're gonna, you're just, you're going to. You're gonna have debt, you need to look at it. So decide what's gonna be more important than something else with your product teams so that they buy in. And then create standards. So this is really, really important. Step three, and we tried to keep this, you know, generally easy to follow. Again, this will all be available in our GitHub, but you know, once you establish that support from leadership to, to use a software readiness review program, you need to understand that you have to track each release. So this is another thing that you have to add a certain way. Um, you know, we use JIRA to track bugs, so, you know, um, going into that, the third bullet point, it's a really good idea also to establish, um, you know, tags that you can all understand. Uh, it's, it's difficult to get product names that are, <laughs> believe it or not, we, you know, every, I think every team or company has a challenge with this, but, you know, every team within a company calls a product name different. So when you create tags to tag vulnerabilities, make sure that all everybody knows what you mean when you say product A. Even if it's in beta and it has six different names, assign a specific vulnerability name to it so that when you look at releases, you all know what you're talking about. Again, that goes between you know, the communication. Um, define that risk threshold. I'm not gonna tell you what BlackBerry does for this. You need to make up your own, but everybody should be on the same page with what the risk threshold is. Is it no criticals? You defined a critical, so you should all be on the same page. Are you gonna be okay with the low to moderates? You have to define that. And then you need to outline an, an exception process because at the end of the day, product teams need to ship products. I can tell you it's not worth worrying about a hot fix that's going to one customer and dying on a hill over something that's gonna be, you know, GC'd the next day. You have to decide what that looks like and you need to do it before. So what do we need? We need templates. We all, we need spreadsheets, and this guy, he's got some great spreadsheets for us. So here's the first one available in our GitHub. Uh, I'm gonna go over this quickly. Um, basically, this is a should we ship it calculator. This calculator assumes that there's a vulnerability that you've investigated already. This is in addition to CVSS score. This is not meant to look at CVSS score. This template is awesome because what it does is it speaks to your business. Your business wants to fix security vulnerabilities, they do, but they need to make money. So you have to be able to be in the middle of that relationship and allow them to securely release software. And if you're going to establish this program as a security control and make it effective, 
you're going to have to get together with your business and know how to speak, them, uh, speak to them. Again, this will be available in our GitHub. Basically, it looks at revenue impact for a release, looks at what's the ease of discovery of the vulnerability, and you can see that at the top right there, the base CVSS score is actually included, but it looks at things like media and publicity, uh, and impact to the business, and then in research trends, right? This is way more important if it's a 5.2 CVSS score if it has to do with Spectre or Meltdown, because it's trending. And your business needs to know the dollar value and how it's assigned. So this is a really, really helpful, helpful, helpful temp template. All right, but still, it's not that easy. And you need to remember when you're using some of these templates that there's no patch Tuesday for open source software. Gosh, that would be amazing if there was, but there's not, right? And then you have things like multi-party disclosure. There's a researcher involved. Is there another company involved? These are all things that you have to add onto that template to help the business understand what it is you're dealing with. You've got to do things like track fix commitments. So if your product team tells you they're going to fix the vulnerability in the next release, did they fix it? Or did they back out because it broke functionality and you've still got a fix you need to push through? You've got to standardize those processes between all of the business units. But we're always going to have to escalate because we're always going to have to escalate. So here's another uh, template we're going to share with you in our GitHub. This is the temp uh, technical escalation we use when we have a software release where we need to escalate liability. Um, and again, we don't gate software. We actually just make sure that it, if there's any potential liability, that it's escalated. In our GitHub will also be these instructions with how you're going to look at filling them out. And then some final things to remember before we're done here today. Uh, from 2017, just some stats from our group. We, uh, we have a, an average of about eight vulnerabilities we investigate per product instance in our company. That's a lot. We looked at 515 security releases last year. That's a lot of security releases to put this program through. So just if you want some, some helpful numbers to take back with you. Um, discovery and public announcements of vulnerabilities are unpredictable. This is important for every release, every time, no matter what, because you don't know what you're going to wake up to tomorrow morning, just the nature of the cert. Um, and then focus on making progress. You know, your business is trying to make money. You have to remember that the idea here is to make progress with them, to teach them how to ship, you know, secure software, reduce attack surface footprint, and ultimately make money, just make it, make it securely. Uh, okay, that is it for me today. Here's some contact information. You can reach out to me. I am cgadsby at blackberry.com, or you can uh, write to our BB cert. Uh, we have a career site. We're obviously hiring. There's our GitHub address. It'll have all of this information, and also um, the open source maturity model if you want to pull that down. I know I've had a lot of companies take that and reuse it. You're welcome to use it. Um, and then uh, where BB cert incident response team is if you'd like to find them, and I'll be available for questions uh, in the breakout room.